This is the practice test for Excel 2010 and uh, the instructions are on the worksheets. On the first two worksheets here um, it's just instructions they all apply to sheet number one over here. So let's get started. Save the file on your desktop and put last name first name stocks as the name of it. So let's go to our file tab and do a save as and um, I'm already on the desktop. You need to get the desktop. Here it is. And it's going to be and I've already got one there. You probably will not, but um, okay. Uh, change the name of sheet one to stocks. I can either go down here and double click or and then just type stocks on top of it or the alternative is to right click and choose rename but double click I think is easier okay let's go back to the instructions here and we want to delete row 5 okay so get the fat black arrow over here in the row headers and uh, right click and choose delete and now let's go back and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the color of these as I do them Merge and center the text in A1 over all of the columns from name to note. So A1, this is the name column and this is the note column. So basically over, center it over all of my data. Merge and center. Let's go back to Sheet 1 instructions. Turn those black. Set the font for the entire worksheet to 10 point Verdana. Let's do two at a time here and format the text in A1 using the title cell style. So 10 point for Dana and title. Select the whole thing here or you could also do a control A. And uh, we want uh, Verdana. And just type the first few letters. First two is all you need. And there it is down there at the bottom. And 10 point also. And then we want to make this title style or cell style and uh, we want the title style right there so let's go back to our instructions here and um, change the color of those two set the height of the headings row to 42 or 52 pixels the headings row I'm going to uh, right click here and row height and right now it's 23 I'm going to make it 42 and click on OK. Now the number of pixels may vary I think depending on, yeah it does, it's not 70 on this monitor, it was on a different monitor that I tried this on. Uh, so just set the height to 42, don't worry about the number of pixels. So let's go here and um, take care of that. Make the headings row row 4 and make it bold and turn on the wrap text feature and make sure that you don't have any words spilling over uh, broken in the middle of, of one line so uh, bold and wrap text so let's make them bold here you also do a control B if you want and then we're going to turn on the wrap text feature which is in the alignment group here and um, now usually when you do that, uh, it will adjust the height for you automatically. If that does not happen, just go to the bottom of row 4 over here. Double click when you get your two-headed arrow. And uh, just make sure here none of the words are split. Uh, they're not split on mine. If, if they are split on yours, uh, just go up here and get your two-headed arrow, you know, and uh, widen the column if necessary. And I'm going to uh, drop the zoom down here to 100%. So I can just see a little more on the screen. Okay. And now let's go to Sheet 1 Instructions and let's make that black. And then we're going to set the fill color for the headings to write light gray. And we're going to put a thick bottom border underneath it. So let's go to Stocks here. And um, now there is no color, the fill color. This is the font color. Make sure you get the fill color. Uh, there is no color named light gray. There are some different shades of gray here. These are first two are pretty light. Let's do the second one here and then we also want a thick bottom border. The borders have names and uh, this is the thick bottom border right there. Now if I click off uh, that's what it's going to look like. There's my thick border on the bottom and that takes care of all the instructions on this sheet. 
Uh, we've got a bunch more over here. Uh, this is for actually doing some of the calculations now. So calculate the total purchase price by multiplying shares by the purchase price per share. So total purchase price is here. I want to take shares by purchase price per share. So that's just going to be a formula. So type equals and then take shares. You can click on it or you can type C5. Times is the asterisk and the purchase price per share is this and hit the enter key and that's my answer. Let's go back here and we can black out the first one. Calculate the total current price by multiplying shares by the current price per share. So let's just select that before we go and uh, this is equals shares times asterisk current price per share so C5 times E5 equals okay. and go back and we can make that one black now let's take a look at the next one profit or loss subtract total purchase price from the total current price so make sure you don't get this backwards um, I subtract this from this, so I'm going to do, whoops, wrong one, not the price per share. I want this one minus this one. So this has gone down in price, so it should be a loss. It should be a negative number, and if I hit enter, I do get a negative number. and calculate the sum of the total purchase price column, the total current price column, and the t profit or loss column. Okay, well I didn't s copy those down the page. Uh, you can do these one at a time, but it's easier just to wait and copy them down the page all at once. And there we go. And then I want some totals down here at the bottom, and the easy way to do this is with the auto sum button. And also just select all of them at once and then do auto sum and there we go. Now I'm going to undo that and we're going to see what happens here. Um, if we do them one at a time, I think everything works out pretty much the same. Now it is getting this extra cell here so technically you don't want to count that one probably. So uh, if we can go to the lower right hand corner here which is kind of touchy and get a two-headed arrow. Uh, there we go. Uh, there's not a very big area where you can actually get that two-headed arrow and then hit the enter key and um, then you can also take that and just copy it across. So that gives me my three sums there and that was an easy three points. Now uh, calculate the stock's percent of total portfolio by dividing the total current price by the total current portfolio value at the bottom. So let's go back over here. So. Um, the, I want to know what percent this is of the number at the bottom. So I'm just dividing equals and click on G5 divided by s slash and then the total down here at the bottom and uh, whoops uh, I want the bottom of this column and that's going to be absolute so make sure you put in two dollar signs. Put in a dollar sign in front of the G and a dollar sign in front of the 35 because when I copy this formula I want the top number to change every time I move down a row but I want the denominator, the divisor, to always be the same value. So let's go down to there and uh, I think it says to format those as percents um, it doesn't say that now, but I'm sure we're going to do that later. Um, format F, G, and H with a comma and zero decimal places, and then I is a percent uh, with two decimal places. So um, we'll select all of these, and you know, don't forget uh, these. I'm doing a non-adjacent selection here, so hold the control key down while you drag over that bottom row of numbers. And we wanted uh, a comma with zero decimal places and on these numbers over here we want a percent with uh, two decimal places so increase the decimal places by two and that takes care of those two um, calculate the percentage of total portfolio column and uh, the sum and put the result in the totals row at the bottom and if we did it right the number should be 100% so that's an easy way to check on things like that. Uh, 
if you're trying to find what percent things are of a total, uh, they should always add up to 100% when you're done. So, okay, now here, the auto sum wants to sum the numbers that are closest by, and we don't want those. So it's real simple to fix. Just take your mouse and click on the bottom number that you want, drag all the way up through the top number that you want, and uh, now down here it says the sum from I5 to I33, which is exactly the right numbers, and hit enter. And it did uh, carry the formatting down here as well. And uh, now we've got our sum down there. And we can turn that one black. And now we're going to go to the note column. We want a formula that will put a plus sign if it shows a profit and a minus sign if it shows a loss. Okay. Well, how do you know if it showed a profit? Uh, if this number is positive or greater than zero, then we put a plus sign. If it's less than zero, that's what the parentheses mean here. That's just another format for parentheses. So let's go here. And this is the if function, which is one of the logical functions. And uh, you can just type it out if you know how to do this well enough. But uh, the easy way is to go here. So the logical test is going to be if this number is greater than 0, then tab down here or click down here, put a plus sign. And notice when I tab out or click out, uh, it puts quotation marks around it because this is text, not a number. And then if I tab out of this, notice when I tab, it takes me here, but the quotation marks appear again. And then if I tab again, I'm over on the OK, and now you need to just hit Enter because that's selected, or you can click on it like I'm going to do right now. And so that one had a loss, so I should get a negative sign there. And then just copy this all the way down as well. And there should be a plus every time I've got a profit, and a minus every time where I do not. So let's go back here. Um, let's go back to our home tab here and turn that black. Uh, we want to count the number of stocks with a profit and count the number with a loss in D37 and D38. So um, that's going to be the count if function. So let's go to our formulas tab here. And um, that's actually, I think, uh, statistical or math. So let's go down here. It's statistical. So count if. And you got to give it a range. And um, what I want is uh, there's there's two ways to do this. Uh, I can either count this number, see if it's bigger than zero, or I can count this and see if it's just equal to a plus sign. And the criteria here, if it's equal, you can just put the value you want it to be equal to. Um, if I were doing uh, criteria, like if I were looking at column H, my criteria would be greater than zero. But I'm not looking at H, I'm looking at J. So I just want the criteria to be a plus, And you don't need to do equal uh, if you're testing for equality. So click on OK. And it tells me there are 20 that show a profit. And down here, I'm going to use the same function, count, uh, whoops, statistical, count if. And the range is going to be the same again. And the criteria this time is, is there a minus? And uh, click on OK. And there are nine. And if I uh, drag my mouse over all these cells here, um, notice down here, when you select a range, it'll always tell you how many you've got selected. Uh, if, you, if there are numbers in the cell, it'll also give you a sum and an average. Um, but I've got 29 selected. Uh, if I add up the number showing a profit or loss, I also get 29. So I'm counting everything. So that's kind of a way to double check. And um, okay, um, okay. I the instructions say column H, but looking at column um, I is the same thing, just different criteria. Uh, center align the category column and the note column. So let's go back here, and uh, this is the note column, and the category is this one over here. Now you have to hold the control key down while you select that column, and then you have to center align. Let's go back here, um, select that row, and let's turn it black. Uh, change the name in the right part of the header to your first and last name and add the file name to the left part of the footer. So let's go back to stocks here. And uh, this is the same as it is in Word. Uh, just go insert and header and footer. And we've got three sections up here. Uh, I've already got my name there. You'll have to replace that with your name. Uh, and then um, there should be a button up here to tell us to go to the footer. And in the bottom of the f uh, left part of the footer, we want to put the file name. Here's the file name on the design tools 
for header and footer, the design tab for the header and footer tools. And click on that and it puts in the code. And uh, now we want to go back. Uh, let's uh, just click up here somewhere. And um, we also want to go back to normal view, I think. So, okay. And that takes care of those two. We can turn those black and make all columns as wide as they need to be, display all their data and headings. Now, I noticed when I was down here um, that these columns are not wide enough, so let's just, some of the names are chopped off, so let's just go double click here, make that wider. And uh, this stuff was chopped off as well, but now this is okay. And so it looks like we're good there. And uh, then do a print preview. We want landscape centered. Turn off the grid lines. Make sure it fits on a single page. So let's go to uh, backstage view here and click on print. And uh, okay, it's one of two. That's because it's in portrait. Maybe if we change it to uh, landscape, uh, everything will fit. Well, now it's three pages. Okay, so yeah, a little bit hanging over the bottom and a little bit hanging over the right. And so we want to oh, whoops, go to scaling here and fit it on one page. And uh, then we want to go to page setup and uh, go to margins here. This is where you center it horizontally, but since I had to squeeze it or scale it to fit, uh, that part's probably redundant. Uh, the other part was to turn off the grid lines. This is where the grid lines are turned on. Click on OK. And I think that was everything we were supposed to do. Let's go back here and center it horizontally. Uh, landscape. No grid lines. Make sure it fits on one page. And uh, let's go back to the stocks page here. And let's go to page layout. And um, this is also uh, where you can turn grid lines on or off. Uh, view lets you view them when you're working, which is something I think you want. This is what you get if you turn that off, and I don't like that. So leave that on, but for print, this is another way to turn those off. And I've been talking quite a while, and there's still quite a bit more of the test left, so I'll stop this video right here, and we'll continue it in another one.